Well, hello, I'm Mike Festivo. Welcome back. We're going to cover a five month, 30 hour review of this machine. This is a RIPA R319 mini excavator. We're going to cover if I regret buying this or not, how it's held up, what kind of maintenance I've done to it up to this point, and any issues that have come up and how I've resolved them, and any other issues I see in the foreseeable future. So stick around, enjoy the video. So first off, I want to say I have zero regrets buying this $6,100 mini excavator. Now at $6,100 price point, I knew there was going to be some quality issues and some things that were a downside to buying a machine that's so affordable compared to like say a Kubota. That's probably 35 grand in this price range. I haven't looked them up, but they are not cheap. I just want a simple little machine for around my property. I have a much bigger Yanmar. But I find I jump to this thing all the time, mainly the hydraulic thumb and the maneuverability. It's quick to start up and run around. You don't have to warm it up as long as a simple little air cooled engine. It's just kind of been my go to for the last five months. My Yanmar has been sitting around and only use it two or three times in the last five months. So this little thing has been a complete workhorse for around here. Like I said, it's very fuel efficient. It has a 13 and a half horsepower air cooled engine. I only run it about uh, half throttle. It's got plenty of power at that point. Even with the blade down, if you hook it under a root and pull up really hard, it will lift the back of the track and the back of the machine off the ground easily. So the hydraulics and engine horsepower is no issue with it. Simplicity has been awesome. It's kind of like a wood splitter on tracks. It just has a simple single pump. Can be some downsides. I cover in a previous video I did. If you haven't seen the reason why I chose the RIPA machine over all the different Chinese excavators out there on the market, uh, I definitely recommend checking that video out, the previous one I did on this thing. I'll put a link below in the description at the very end of the video. Covers a lot of things. If you have questions, I'd recommend checking that video out. We'll go back to this and talk about uh, power has been great. I mean, keep in mind, this is good for like small jobs around the house. You could pick up a little side work with it. It's not a commercial built machine, but it's great for around the house, lifting plenty of stuff. Like if you have a small piece of property or a few lots and you want a machine, you're planning to do lance escaping with it. This thing's great for digging ditches and rock walls and stuff like that. The hydraulic thumb's been awesome for stacking rock, lifting logs. It's fantastic for lifting smaller size logs around my sawmill. Keep in mind, you're not gonna pick up a two foot diameter, eight foot long Douglas fir that's green. It's just not gonna have the weight to hold this thing down. It's only 1800 pound machine but you're gonna pick up smaller logs moving around on your mill if you have a smaller mill. It's a back saver. Uh, I've done a lot of work with this thing and if you just move stuff around, like this will pick up a small riding lawn tractor if you're lifting it up to put it on blocks to work on or something, it will lift quite a bit, especially with the blade down. Save yourself some back issues hernia issues like back surgery and hernia surgery is not fun and it's not cheap this is cheaper than that this was a 6100 bucks i think shipping charges have gone up freighting them over from china so i think they're 6400 now on the website i'll put a link below where i ordered it from not affiliated with that company by any means. That's just where I order from and they've been decent to deal with. Parts availability, that's one thing. You know, I'm pretty good at tracking stuff down. I own a bunch of different gray market machines. My Yamar excavator, my tractor is gray market from Japan and my little mini truck. But I'm pretty good at tracking parts down, but there's a lot of concern what happens if a hydraulic drive motor goes out or something like that. Well, I've talked with the company since I ordered it and they said, you know, most smaller parts we can get five to six days that can be shipped easily in the mail. Any bigger things, it might take up to a month to get but they said if you had any issues with this thing this machine comes with a one-year warranty i have not had to utilize that yet I, the way it's holding up i don't know if i will but it's nice that it has that and you got someone you can pick up the phone and call and say hey this is what's going on can you help me find this part it's nice to have that in your back pocket So we'll go over some of the things that I really like about this machine. I really like the hydraulic thumb. Some of these machines you can get on the market, the Chinese ice fairs, they have manual thumbs, you can get hydraulic kits. This was all plumbed, ready to go with a hydraulic thumb on it. And it's been sturdy. Some other brands, the thumbs aren't supported right and they bend. You see a bunch of Facebook forums where people have the thumbs bent out of the way. I've been used this for 30 hours, picked up rocks, logs, sticks, branches, haven't had the thumb bend at all. It also has uh, splitter valves up here so you can turn the 
hydraulic thumb off, retract it, turn it off, and run another attachment. Like I got some attachments coming in a hydraulic tilting material bucket. It's like a 30, 32 inch bucket. Or you can run an auger up here just by hooking up your hydraulic attachment, rotating this valve, and it will send power out to your auger or tilting bucket or whatever else you plan to put on here. So I like that. I like all the lines are recessed inside the boom for the most part here. Less stuff to get caught up and snagged on. I like that all the hydraulic lines have line protection on them. Even going into the main house over here, there's a big rubber gasket basically that all the lines go through and that keeps them from getting chafed in there. The hydraulic motor I've heard about on some forums and different brands. The motor for the, the rotation of the has come loose and caused all kinds of people problems. This one, the bolts are all nice and tight and they're all stainless wire wrapped, safety wired, so they can't come loose. Zero track issues on this model. I've heard some people having problems when I got it. One of the tracks were a bit tight. I could feel that motor struggle a little more, so I backed the track off. I've been checking tension the last 30 hours and had no issues. They seem to be just fine had no problems with the motors. A lot of things, the compactness has been fantastic getting in close around buildings and things like that. Overall, uh, machine is pretty simple to control, even being a single pump unit instead of a three pump like my Yanmar is. Um, you can do two functions at a time. You can swing and curl. You can lift the boom up and swing. You can do different stuff like that at the same time. It may slow both the functions down, but it has the ability. I've had some people ask if it can do two things like curl and lift at the same time. And yes, it can. And that's at mid RPM, it's not full RPM. So that's been great. Um, there's a lot of other things that I just appreciate about the machine and it works really well, been very reliable for this first 30 hours. Now we're we'll going to a few things that I don't care for as much about it. And I may make some changes for. Uh, one of the things, this little, this isn't really a ROPS, this is more of what they call a sunshade. Might keep a branch from falling off and hitting you. It's a metal top, very thin. But um, I don't like the two post design. At some point, I may bring another two post down to the back and connect it. Um, just because it's fine when you're just digging and stuff, but when you're traveling around, it's kind of goofy. The thing will shake like that. I think it adds a lot of stress to the base plate down here, even though this base plate is like three eighths thick it still causes some stress. So I don't like that. There's been previous video where I took it off for a long time and ran it without. And it might keep the machine if you flopped it on the side from tipping all the way over, but it's definitely not roll protection. It'd be nice to see a little bit better roll protection, some ROPS on here, but I'm gonna probably bring some more pose down, support it. Another thing I don't like as much, it could be easily addressed. I have not had to get into the engine bay too much. The way you get into it to gas it and check the oil is you take two wing nuts off here, lift the seat off, and you can gas it, it's okay. Uh, newer models, I guess they actually put a fuel gauge and a fuel tank right up here, so that's been an improvement. There's been some changes on these in just the last five months since I bought it, and I'll add a little bit more about what one of the customers Customers that bought one of these reached out to me as a subscriber of mine and he talked about his machine having and not having option. This back cover comes off with four bolts very easily to get to the engine for changing oil. It's not very hard but it would be really nice to set this up with a latch and swing out of the way so you can open and swing this quick with just some latches. I may do that in the future but honestly I haven't had to get in there much other than checking the oil on occasion. Another thing that I have known going into this, but I was a little leery about spending any more money on a machine that I couldn't find any reviews on was this is a fixed track model and it's very simple and reliable that way. But I live on a hillside and if you're lifting a heavy load out to the side, you want to keep it low in case the machine tips up because it is pretty narrow. This thing is narrow enough to fit through gateways and stuff. They do make an expanded track model. I think it's another 14 or $1,500. I contemplated buying that one. I think now I probably should have just, I've gotten really used to this thing being a narrow stance and how to dig with it and how to travel with it. But on this hillside around here, it would just be a little more peace of mind to get that expandable track model. With that being said, this one has a brace bar between the motors and I've heard about other manufacturers, people having issues getting gravel and stuff caught in the track and bending out their undercarriage. Uh, the undercarriage on some of these machines from different makes and models can be light duty. Uh, I don't want you guys getting that mistaken that it has to be associated with this brand or another brand. There's a lot of different brands out there and some companies cut some corners. This one had a big welded in crossbar which you could weld on any of your machines and add to it. 
But um, the expandable track model, I don't know if there's much of a way to do a, a crossbar on there that will sort it out. I think there's one way where it could be a nestable tubing and you pin it when it's out or pin it when it's in. One of my friends wants to buy this machine from me. He's operated a few times, he likes it. He wants to set it up with mainly just for splitting firewood so you can pick up firewood and have a splitter at the end if he's got back problems and he wants to be able to pick up log rounds with the splitter and cut them. So he wants to buy this machine from me and I have an opportunity to sell it and order the expandable track model. And I may get one with the swing boom, just so you can get closer up against buildings if you wanna pick up a little side work and do some ditching along sides and work on some drains and stuff. So I'm kind of contemplating that. I really like the simple 13 and a half horse model, the air-cooled engine, cause you can go to Harbor Freight for like 350 and buy a new engine and drop it in. I like the simplicity of it, but I have an option to possibly, maybe if I get a swing boom model, expandable track, should I? And I'm asking you guys this, what do you think about the diesel model? It's got the cool factor, but you know, I can get on Amazon, eBay and buy a Briggs and Stratton starter or carb or anything like that. The diesels, it runs in the aspect of, okay, alternator goes out, a starter goes out, or your uh, fuel injection pump goes out. It's going to be a little harder to source that kind of stuff. Even if you do, you can call up the company, it might take a while. And if you have a machine like this, if you were doing a job, a project or something, you want to just like, if this engine shit out, I could just go to Harbor Freight and buy one. What's your take on that? Do you guys think I should go for a diesel model so you guys can see what to expect on that? That's an opportunity for me to do another video on a different machine, different model. Sell this one to a friend, get expanded track model. Should I go for a gas or diesel? Leave a comment down below. So another thing I want to mention is uh, some other makes and models people have talked about dealing with the hydraulics getting crazy hot. I think some people said the hydraulics were so hot that they're causing steam when they're working out in the rain on them. And I have not had an issue with hydraulics. I think uh, the way this one's set up, the hydraulic reservoir is down low out of the way and the other ones were sitting closer to the exhaust and up higher where a lot more heat is on different makes and models. This has not been an issue. The hottest I've ever seen the hydraulics get were 114 degrees. Um, and that was on like a 78 degree day working it kind of hard, digging out roots and stuff to pop out a tree out of the ground and a stump and uh, a lot of traveling with the hydraulic motors moving back and forth. And that was maybe running it for about an hour, a little longer. And that's about all I've ever seen it get up to about 114 degrees. I'm not in Texas or somewhere super hot. I'm out in Washington and you know, our summer days are like, in the 80s maybe we'll fit a few 90s i'll see what it does in those temperatures but uh this thing did not come with an hour meter on it i put one on two or three hours into buying it and that hour meter i ordered also had a, a temperature to check for like a the, how hot an engine is well for me it's an air-cooled engine i'm not too concerned about that the fans are always connected to the crank spinning i run it mid rpm never had an issue i've had a few people tell me i'm going to destroy my engine run at mid rpm Listen, it's air-cooled engine. That's a one-to-one -one ratio for that fan to the RPM. So it's fine. I think why run it full throttle if you don't have to? I don't need to run it and hear that engine running like that. It's more fuel efficient mid throttle. It's got plenty of power. I've never dealt with the engine or hydraulics getting very hot running it like that. Like I said, it's got a temperature gauge, so I hooked that by the hydraulic filter on this machine so I could tell what the hydraulic temperatures were getting. After running it for an hour, hour and a half, I've only ever seen it get up to about 107 to 114. It's usually sticking around 90 to 100 degrees and barely warm to the touch. Originally going into it, reading about a lot of other machines on forums, people are trying to put coolers on them because they're talking about their hydraulic getting really hot on different makes and models. I don't think a cooler is that necessary, at least in this part of the country with, you know, 80 degree days, it's just not going to be a problem I have found with this machine. Now there's crazy amounts of attachments you can buy for these things. You know, just a bucket and, and hydraulic thumb are probably going to be your go-to all the time and the most useful, but you can get quick change attachments up here so you can take the bucket off and put a ripper on there. I actually ordered some attachments here I'll go into, but uh, the quick change I want to mention, you do lose some curl leverage. So if you're trying to rip something big out of the ground or doing a lot of hard work, I don't really recommend running a quick change because it offsets this about a few more inches. You lose some curl power there. But there's going to be some points where um, you probably want to run the quick change if you're like going from an auger 
to a bucket and back and forth and doing lighter work with it you're going to probably want to run that so i ordered quite a few attachments i'm still waiting on them unfortunately it's taken a few months some of them are shipping in this next week and when i get them i'm going to start working on a video on the attachments what i think about them so i have a wood grapple it's kind of like an exaggerated system right here it's got like it's like almost a rake with a thumb but wider that come together it's got a wood grabber that's going to be kind of interesting you got to take off everything here it's a little bit more to put on but i think for moving firewood large loads of it and lots of brush it's going to be great i have a 30 or 32 inch hydraulic tilting bucket material bucket no teeth flat for like scraping you can do a lot of grading because you can manipulate the angle doesn't matter what angle the machine is on you can manipulate the bucket to change grades for doing mellow wide drainage ditches moving you know wood chips gravel soil it's going to be super useful i have that coming in i have a ripper claw for popping out roots i'm really excited about that i have a bunch of smaller trees i need to pop out to kind of reclaim an old orchard that's going to be a future video here yeah i have a few others a smaller uh, bucket i want a really skinny ditching bucket the one that was available is only a few inches skinnier than this so i ordered it and uh, hopefully that'll be skinny enough i'm still waiting i think it's gonna be another month on a hydraulic 12 inch hydraulic auger for i want something bigger for doing some pull barn buildings and auger and in holes in the ground so i got a hydraulic auger coming and i have a quick change attachment that i'm still waiting on and a 24 inch rake for doing work like ripping out small roots and grading and pulling rocks out of dirt so there's even more attachments available than that for these machines so they're kind of like the swiss army knife of the mini excavators and these attachments are all pretty affordable you can find them all over online i just called up the company i ordered this from because i just want to make sure the hydraulic parts are going to fit and i want to make sure that every the pins are going to be good they know what fits this machine and their prices were very comparable to anything else i could find online so in the last 30 hours five months i'll go over what i've done to the machine some of it's just basic maintenance and only one repair not crazy hard but something worthwhile to note i mean you might wonder five months and 30 hours well i live in the northwest i ordered the machine and got it back in february and if you break open ground in winter to early spring around here it just completely turns into mud fest and i don't want to make more work for myself so in a really limited amount of work i could do in the winter months with this machine without tearing up things worse so i think by the end of summer i'll probably have 60 70 hours on this machine because it's dry weather easy to work with and not make a bunch of mud other than basic maintenance like i ran it for two to three hours with the engine oil changed it put fresh engine oil in it i haven't touched the hydraulic oil because i've looked it over and it feels like regular hydraulic oil to me some people say different brands they have weird oil in them that's not good and get it out i bought oil intending to change it and i haven't had an issue i'll probably at maybe 40 hours change it just to make sure i got some fresh stuff in there and if there's any particles make sure to get it out but um this one also has an oil filter on it which is nice for the hydraulic oil system so a few of the zerks when i got it would not take grease they have these special flush mount zerks so they don't get broken off as easy and i sourced them on amazon metric ones i'll put a link down below in the description for the zerks a big multi-pack that fits different sizes but i had a few down here that wouldn't take grease for the um, arms on the blade a few up here that just had too much paint on them to take grease so i pulled them out and put your standard grease nipples on here on a lot of fittings a few of them that were in like close proximity to getting ripped off like in the dirt i kept there flush mount ones because i think they're more sturdy for that application i did that changed oil changed track tension when i first got it and other than that just make sure to grease the machine every you know three four hours and just put a little bit of grease in every pin and uh it's been fine now the only issue i've had was in the previous video i mentioned that the big digging ears on the bucket from picking up rocks and logs has started to flare the side of the bucket wall because it was very thin it was like eighth inch and finally my final straw with that was i was rolling digging a bunch of hard pan dirt and i rolled out of the dirt and curled back and curled onto a large rounded river rock and it flared out the side of the bucket even worse and i thought well, to save myself from doing major repairs later, I'm going to take care of this now. And I bent the edge of the bucket back, the thin eighth inch, and I cut out with my Arcdroid CNC, which you could do this with a, a simple um, angle grinder. Just cut some plates. I welded 3 sixteenths, I think, plate on the side, braced the bucket, and I put another 8 to 10 hours on it with zero issues of bending. So the buckets are pretty sturdy with the teeth. The front cutting edge is half inch, but they went really light wall 
on the sides of the bucket. And I, since then I've called the company I ordered this from and told the owner, and he is looking to talk with the company Ripa and see if they can get more reinforced buckets down the road. I don't know how long that's gonna take to implement to get going. At least I contact the guy and say, hey, this is the only issue I've seen with the machine. Only future maintenance I see on this machine that's gonna take some fabrication. And this is probably down the road 100 to 150 hours you're gonna probably start seeing this issue. And that is this hydraulic thumb pin here that it pivots on. Has no way to grease this thing. I've just squirted some grease in here, but this is gonna wear out. So keep in mind, all the bucket linkage, everything like that's all greasable. There's a greasable fitting right here for the hydraulic to the thumb and from the thumb hydraulic to the uh, dipper here. But down here in this mount, there's no way to grease this and it's kind of a light duty system. This is all pretty heavy duty, this thumb here, and this is tubes right here and this pin goes through and is bolted. The pivot point is this pin in this open ear assembly. And this open ear assembly is only quarter inch on each side and it hasn't been an issue, but you're gonna start developing slop into here. And my solution to this at some point down the road when it starts to wear out a little, pull the pin, pull the thumb off, I'm going to grind out or open up these holes where the pin goes through in these ears and gonna sleeve it with a tube and drill it for a zerk. Because that way, when it rotates, all that force that's on that thing is forced onto a tube that fits between these ears. So this is the only thing that I'm kind of surprised the company let go on it for having engineers. They should have, they engineered the whole thing pretty well. And uh, this is the only thing I'm like, well, they should have done better here. I don't know why they set it up this way and if it's maybe for running a different, maybe a grapple goes in there. Maybe there's a different attachment that fits in here that reason is open i don't know i'll find out when i get that wood grapple that's the only attachment i think that could hook onto there and need that open center if that's the case maybe that's why they did it but i see this being an issue down the road there's not really any play right now but without being able to grease it and having all that pressure from that thumb moving on two pieces of quarter inch that's going to be a problem so here's a simple breakdown of hours. I don't think you're ever gonna get three, 4,000 hours on a machine that's kind of for a homeowner operation. You gotta be realistic about the amount of hours you're gonna have, but how much less you have involved into this. I mean, this is like the cost of like a, uh, go to a Home Depot and buy like a zero turn riding lawn tractor that's like mid-grade consumer level. It's the same cost. I mean, we're talking like $6,000 range, okay? So you gotta be realistic. With this machine right now at 30 hours, I have every hour I worked it is $203 to pay it off. It's kind of expensive, but you break it down at 100 hours. So I'm at 30 in five months. At 100 hours, it works out to be $60 an hour. At 200 hours, that makes it down to $30 an hour to run this machine. At 400 hours on this machine, which I think it should easily do, is gonna be $15 an hour. So as you keep getting on more and more hours on these machines, it becomes cheaper and cheaper. It's gonna save your back, gonna save, again, a hernia. You know, you don't have to deal with going to like a Home Depot or a rental yard and renting the machine. Yeah, you could get a bigger machine, but it's still gonna cost you a chunk of change. You're like, I've oh, got eight hours a day limited to run it. It's gonna cost you, you know, five, 600 bucks to rent it for like a weekend. And uh, yeah, you can get a lot of projects done with that, especially if you got some big ones and you're moving a lot of dirt. But honestly, the way I found with having my Yanmar in this machine, you're not gonna rent a machine to lift something heavy out the back of your truck because you brought like a big generator home or something like that and it's too heavy to lift by hand. You're just gonna fire up one of your machines and go over it and just put a strap around it, lift it out, set it down, you're done 10 minutes later. You're not gonna rent a machine for that. So those are the kinds of things that are gonna save your back and save you from kind of tearing yourself up. The other day I bought a yard of gravel and I had it dumped in the back of my Ford F-250. I hauled it to a little project I wanted to do. I hand shoveled it all, I wheelbarrowed it all. And after doing that, might be just getting older, but I wear and tear on my body. I felt some pain in this area. I've been dealing with this off and on for quite a few years. I think it's a partial tear of a hernia. I really don't want to get surgery. I don't think it's there yet. I'm going to try to save my body. Uh, future, I got four yards of the same gravel delivered on site. And I had this here and I had a wheelbarrow. I didn't have my material bucket yet, 
but I would do three scoops of this, keeps me from doing all that shoveling, three scoops of this into a wheelbarrow, get it all the weight up front and wheelbarrow it down. I was regraveling a path and fixing up a path. And I got that all spread, no pain at all, no back pain, no uh, abdomen pain. Those are the kinds of things like, for me, that's what makes this thing worthwhile to have and doing rock wall work. Like, yeah, you could muscle up big rocks and beat yourself up, but man, I've, I'm 43, I've done that kind of work too much in my life already. I've done landscaping for years, moving heavy stuff, moving countless wheelbarrow loads of bark, soil, gravel. I'm kind of getting to the point where I can't keep doing that stuff to my body. So that's the reason why I think it's worthwhile an investment in your own personal health to get something like this. Now there's lots of brands out there. I recommend seeing what's available. I recommend if you're thinking about getting a mini excavator, get on the Facebook forum. There's so many Chinese mini digging groups for mini digging excavators. And commonly, you're not gonna hear from the people that have had great success with them. You're gonna hear a lot of people that don't know how to do any maintenance on a machine, that got a machine probably from an auction, and they're much more affordable, and then they've had some major issues right out the box or ran in some of the first 20 hours. And so you're gonna hear a lot of horror stories about problems with a lot of machines. Keep in mind, you're not hearing from like 80 to 90% of other people that have had no issues with them or very little issues, or people that know how to weld something or know how to actually do maintenance. So these machines, you're not gonna have a dealership you can just take your machine to and say, hey, I'm dealing with something not working right on the engine and take it in there and have them do it under warranty. You're gonna have to get in there, wrench on it yourself, but these machines are downright simple. If you know basic things like changing oil and a little bit of wrenching and have some basic understanding how to do some welding and simple things like that, you're going to do pretty well. If you have no mechanical skills and abilities to work on your machines and understand how to solve problems, you probably shouldn't get a machine like this. Maybe you really need to get under good understanding how to operate a machine like this. You shouldn't just hop on a machine this small and start moving around doing stuff. You should pay attention what the do's and don'ts are because these things are fairly tippy and skinny. And as long as you operate in their means of what you can and can't do with them, you're gonna be fine. But if you don't have that ability, you should really do a little research on them. That being said, I have zero regrets buying this thing. So towards the beginning of the video, I did mention that I put a, so this is the early 90s, four tracks, Honda. Quads have just gotten bigger and bigger. So the Mini is a real Mini. Uh, it fits in the back of my Ford F250 fantastically. Does not seem to weigh it down very much. This is lighter than a yard of gravel. Like I said, about 1800 pounds. So I've been transporting it that way and it works really well. Um, it's small, crazy power for being such a small machine. I have been so happy with it that I ended up selling some stocks here recently, some Rolls Royce stock. I rolled that money towards a mini skid steer. Unfortunately, it's been delayed in shipping and I'm waiting and waiting and uh, it may be in the next month. I've been waiting a few months already. It's supposedly a RIPA brand as well. I ordered it from the same company because I felt it was a decent company to deal with. And I'm really looking for that skid steer. I got a set of pallet forks for it. That's gonna be super useful for around the mill. It's a simple 420 cc engine like this. I kind of went for a smaller, lighter one, something I could transport in the back of my truck. Also get into tighter spaces. It's gonna be really matched for this thing. We got a, some pretty good sized dirt working projects. I'm looking forward to using that thing on. So when I get that mini skid steer in, get a decent amount of hours on it, I'll do a review video on that as well. Until next time, I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care. Bye.